Sean, I like to look at the problem of free will as one of the great probes of what it means to be sentient, conscious, human. My problem may be as I talk to too many philosophers and a few theologians thrown in there. Maybe I should talk to physicists more. Uh, can you help me with free will? I think that you should not talk to physicists about free will. They are generally <laughs> not any better than the person on the street. But I am a physicist and I will have my opinions and here we are, so I will give them to you. Uh, I think that the idea of strong libertarian free will... Which idea, means that you have an absolute choice to do something other than that which you do. I would say that the idea that you are a law unto yourself, that you can overcome what you would have thought yeah. of the laws of physics. There's no reductionistic explanation where I could understand all your atoms and molecules and predict what you would do. I think that is absolutely nonsense in the sense that we have no evidence for it, no reason to believe it's true. It would be very, very difficult to reconcile that with what we do know about physics. Even with quantum mechanic and deterministic? Yeah, absolutely. It changes nothing at all. We have an absolutely uh, good equation that tells us what's, what's going to happen. There's no room for anything that is changing the predictions of Schrodinger's equation. Um, but that's a different explanation than normally given. Normally given that, that, that quantum mechanics throws up a random explanation, randomness isn't free will. You're making a different point, that you have the prediction of Schrodinger's equation, and so that becomes in its own sense deterministic. Whether the theory is deterministic or indeterministic is completely beside the point for free will. What matters is, is it a theory? Does it make predictions that do not require you know, souls or spirits to get in the way and change those predictions? Mm -hmm. Quantum mechanics, no matter what your formulation of it is, is a theory. It, it says that there's an equation that tells you yes. what's going to happen right, next. Right. It's not up to you what's right. going to happen next. Right. So no free will in that sense. But I always go back to the example of thermodynamics and statistical mechanics, because that's a, a place where we have a perfectly rigorously understood case where there is a fundamental theory, atoms and molecules bumping into each other, and there's an emergent theory of temperature and pressure and viscosity and so mm -hmm. forth. I think free will is emergent. I don't think it's fundamental, but I have no problems talking about it any more than I have trouble talking about temperature. I don't think that a person can get through the day without speaking of other human beings as making choices. That's because free will, the ability to make choices, is an absolutely crucial part of our emergent macroscopic way of talking about human beings. But ultimately, those choices that we think we're making uh, in some sense, independent of the rest of the physical world, is an illusion. It's not an illusion any more than temperature is an illusion. Well, it's an uh, emergent phenomenon that is consistent uh, with the microscopic dynamics. Uh, yeah, but that's, if, if the analogy with temperature is correct, that is, in a sense, an illusion because you're, you're using a different term to describe the same thing. That's not the definition of an illusion. An illusion is something you think is there that is not there. Well, because an emergent it, phenomenon is absolutely there. It's just that you don't need to use it if you use a more fine-grained description. And I always put free will in that category. But but there's a difference between something that's emergent that can be predicted from the 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 laws of the fundamental level and something that's emergent from the fundamental level that in in principle could not be predicted. Right, and I would call those the sensible and the silly notions of emergence. So I'm using the sensible so notion of emergence. So you would say sensible is uh, a pure reductionist point of view, that in principle, every emergent thing, of which free will is one, can ultimately, in principle, uh, be predicted from from lower level, more fundamental. That's right. It's what is called sometimes weak emergence in the philosophy literature. Yeah. And it is the thing for which every experiment ever done by every scientist on Earth is completely consistent. Right. And so you should not be uncomfortable with someone else saying that there's no such thing as free will. I think what they mean is that they don't find it useful to use free will language, and that's fine with me. Right, but but in, in, in principle, you don't disagree with them. I mean, so so in reality, there's there's no uh, a fundamental daylight between your position and someone who would say there is no free will because everything is determined by uh, Schrodinger's equation or the structure of the universe or, or, or whatever it is. And what we think we have in free will is not the case. My ontology is the same as someone who doesn't want to use free will talk, but I think they are being just as silly as someone who I say, what is the temperature in the room, and they start listing the position and velocity of every molecule of air. And so you're using free will as a, as a shorthand to describe the totality of all those molecules. Exactly, just the way we the use words like planets and people and dogs and cats to describe some emergent macroscopic phenomena. Uh, well, there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a little bit of a difference here because when you're describing physical objects, that, that's one thing, that's easy to understand, but when we're talking about free will, we have a sense that we, I can really make choices, that I, what's going to happen five seconds from now, I have a choice. 
Free will is a feature of the way that we talk about human beings in exactly the same way that conservation of energy is a feature of Newtonian mechanics. Okay, and so therefore your ultimate conclusion about free will? I think it's a perfectly valid way to talk about how human beings behave. It's perfectly valid to assign responsibility to people who make choices. There is nothing about it that in any way contradicts the fact that we are parts of the wave function of the universe evolving according to the laws of physics. Which to me says there is no free will. That's okay. You can use the words in whatever way you want. It's what we believe about the nature of reality that ultimately matters.